According to reports, there have been several teams inquiring about both VGK goaltenders. It's a hot topic. We'll discuss it next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. The start of a new week. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick. we come to you from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first to listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast, and please subscribe to our Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On, and you can find all sorts of props and lines there. So, Chris, we've been all over this story, and I've said all along, dating back to last season, that success wouldn't be, oh, got to get this word in there, sustainable. Sustainable success would not be sustainable if you kept Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill for a variety of reasons. And last week, I said, get rid of both of them. I went out on the limb. That's not really. But, um, of course, now, still out there, uh, the free agent, Linus Allmark, he is still hanging around. And Allmark, I think, could be the person that VGK is honing in on. He was a trade deadline rumor linked to Ottawa. If VGK is making a move, get this, Chris, they're going to have to do it before June the 30th because that is when Allmark is set to receive a $1 million bonus, and Boston wants whatever team to pick him up by then. You're also talking about an extension. He's making $5 million a year. Can Kelly McCrimmon, can he do this in quick fashion? I mean, I don't know if... Olmark's a great goalie. I don't have his direct stats in front of me, and... I don't see a path where the Golden Knights necessarily scrap both goaltenders and start fresh. I mean, we're talking about a Stanley Cup tandem group of goalies here. Logan Thompson obviously had injuries down the stretch when the team won the Cup, but he was equally as big as what got the team to that point. Then Aiden Hill had that uh, remarkable run. So I think suggesting both goalies and somehow Linus Olmark comes here, I mean, maybe that is the path. And if that's the path, I don't think that would be a bad thing. I think the other way for this to possibly go, if it's going to happen, and let's be clear, there's people kicking tires right now. This isn't, there's not some big take out there like this. There's, there's a trade is intimate or anything like that. There's people kicking tires. I think Kevin Weeks is the one who reported this on the NHL network. So that's good enough for me to know that there's some type of interest happening in Aiden or Logan, and it's fair. And McCrimmon's going to take every single phone call, and and also Kelly McCrimmon's not going to wait to make a deal if it's in the best short, mid, and or long-term interest of the Golden Knights. So the call might be a little different when McCrimmon answers. Like, I got to think there's some GMs when when – when you call them, right? It's uh, just kind of scraping the surface, you know, Hey, what's up? Are you thinking about some, I got to think when GMs call Kelly McCrimmon, they better have something on the table. They better have something because I think McCrimmon's going to be like, Hey, what you got? I don't think McCrimmon is the, is going to beat around the bush. I think he's going to be direct and say, Hey, what you got cooking? If it's the right deal, he's going to make it. If it's not, he's going to move on. Um, Long story longer where I'm ultimately going with this is, is maybe the path, If there's concerns about Aiden Hill and that $4.9 million contract, if there's concerns about his health, if there's a path for the Golden Knights to rid themselves of Aiden Hill, now you got Logan Thompson back there who made, I believe, 45 appearances last season. And he was very good for most of the season. I think he was a little fatigued at times, but Logan Thompson definitely had a very strong season last year. Uh, Let's take a quick look at his direct numbers. Logan, 25 and 14, 46 appearances. 908 save percentage, just above the league average, so that's good enough for me right there. Maybe the path is to somehow get rid of Aiden Hill's contract, and then you look at a low, a lesser goalie in the free agency market right now. Larry Brosois. If you have a Najelkovic out there, there's a few different goalies out there. Bring bring back Brosois. Bring back Brosois as a number Brosois, two goalie. His issue, Tony, is he's more injury prone than Aiden Hill. When you look at his career appearances and stuff, you need someone who's going to be healthy and come in for 40 games. It's it's the new goal, new NHL for goalies right now. It's not about having 
a 65 game starter and then someone to pick up whatever is left. It's about having a 1A and a 1B who are both going to have between 38 and 47 appearances and off you go. Okay, so David Pegnata of the fourth period said five teams, Chris, are inquiring about one of the goalies, although we don't know which one that they have targeted there other than... It's got to be Logan, doesn't it? Other Toronto, I think that deals... I'd say in all likelihood, the Marner deal could go through because I think Logan Thompson is a very hot target. The other teams inquiring, according to David Pagnata, the Senators, of course, of Omar, if that falls through, they need something to lean back on. The Red Wings, you got Buffalo and Carolina. So those uh, five teams there and VGK, they've got to listen, not only listen, but I think that the talks are a little bit deeper than one might imagine at this point. There's motive. What's the motivation is the question. With Logan Thompson, the motivation is do the Golden Knights view him as the goalie of the future? I still think the answer is no for a bunch of reasons. I say the answer is no. So now you look at the fact that he doesn't even have an $800,000 AAV, I believe. I think Yuri Patera has a higher cap hit, at least last year before his uh, whatever. And what's happening with Yuri Patera all of a sudden? We got, we're got we seven days away from Yuri Patera. He can't be number two. Oh, my God. He can't um, be number two. Cannot. If, if no, they get rid of both of them, he can't be. A, he, he, no, there's he's absolutely no way. He's not number three. Sign Olmark, bring back a bro or someone that's serviceable. Yeah, I mean, well, okay. Olmark and, o- Olmark and Logan Thompson. Perfect. Done. I mean, Aiden Hill. You know, it, it's five million. It's four point nine. But do the Bruins like? It's I don't think the Bruins are going to take on Aiden Aiden Hill. There'd have to be a three team trade, or the Golden Knights would have to find a taker for Aiden Hill. I mean, what's well, Aiden they need Hill's a return? number two in, in in Boston? They've got Swayman. They need a number two. They need yeah, a backup goalie. They don't need Swayman, number one. I has, isn't Sway? I think Swayman's contract is up again. He got a sweetheart of a deal. Uh, through arbitration, sweetheart. Well, they, for the they're Boston trying to clear guy. some money to to take care of Jeremy Swayman as their goaltender of the future. Right, but you're not bringing enough, a five million dollar goalie in to do that. No, Aiden Hill. No, but an LT perhaps as a yeah, an LT perhaps team. absolutely sure. I yeah. mean, you look at like a Samson off here, forty games, forty two games, forty two games, uh, nine nine one nine with the twenty two twenty three Leafs, and then he was an eight nine zero last year with the Leafs, eight nine. Uh, Eight nine the last couple of seasons with the with the Leafs. Um, a couple other goalies that are out there. I mean, you got Capo Kakonen. I don't know about that. I mean, Devils goalie three six four goals against eight nine eight save percentage. Again, that's uh, you know, you got a Scott Wedgwood out there who is an eight nine nine save percentage. Thirty one yeah. years old. Casey DeSmith, Vancouver. I mean, he uh, he might he looked okay at times. I mean, again, this is what the situation is right now. And with the Golden Knights, what's the motivation? Are they looking for a long term goalie out of this? Because Aiden Hill's not the man either. I'm sorry, Golden Knight fans. That's just what the reality is. Or is it a platoon situation where Logan and a Samsonoff, a DeSmith, any any of these other goalies that are out there becomes a platoon situation? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's weird how just two year a year removed from the Stanley Cup and rock goaltending that this conversation is even happening. Isn't that weird? It's not strange to me because they're it's saying Vegas. the same thing. Well, Vegas. but they're saying the same thing in goaltending. Finally, eventually it had to happen that I've seen for the last two seasons. And I think, hey, do you think that McCrimmon could act that fast and get something done where he unloads it. Well, first of all, he'd have to unload Aiden Hill. Okay. Because Aiden Hill, and then they have to extend Linus Allmark. Um, I'm really hot on this rumor. And I, I think I've gone out on a limb on this one, the way you did on the Marner uh, rumors there circulating. Well, and I'll double down on that and said that McCrimmon is, he's going to do the unexpected. It's not going to be necessarily, a Shea Theodore or a Braden McNabb trade to free up money, whether that's going to be for March or so, whether that's going to be for Mitch Marner, whether that's going to be for Patrick Kane. I mean, there's just all these different names that are linked to the Golden Knights right now, and that's what I happened. Think Kane, it came in the Rangers, I think, are getting close. I heard about that, too. I heard about that, too. But it's June 24th. We're seven days from free agency. He doesn't want to travel. 
he doesn't want there's going to be problem. a ton there's going to be a ton of rumors and stuff flying and we're going to address them as they're as necessary but what's the golden knights motivation are they looking for the goalie of the future or are they looking for a band-aid for a couple of seasons I would like Logan to be the future. I think Logan should be the future. I just don't think the team sees that, and that's I they think don't. more of a Sean Burke thing than than anything. So, if there's a path where it's just if Aiden Hill's contract is taken on by someone else, whatever the situation is, you get an inexpensive goalie like a Samson off, and you're paying three million dollars to to a couple of good goaltenders. You're paying three million dollars and change to a couple of good goaltenders, and now all of a sudden the Golden Knights would have. Eight million dollars to work with. March so can swallow up a chunk of that, and then you you work on a couple of the the UFAs and RFAs, and off you go. Yeah, it's going to get interesting uh, this week. And isn't it forty eight hours after the final game? That's when you can do your buyouts. So forty eight hours, a couple of days. So Wednesday, be a buyout. You, I'm you saying there, around the league, to be a buyout. Well, you know, and speaking to some of the scribes here this past week. We were just saying we feel as though Robin Leonard is going to rise from the dead and he's going to pull an undertaker and he's going to be back in action this season. Now you're talking my language right there. Listen, you never mean maybe that's what the path is. Maybe that's why maybe that's why the phone's ringing about the goalies. Maybe someone knows something we don't <laughs> for sure. Uh, but again, also, too, in a couple of days, the talks in earnest can begin pre July 1st, where teams could start talking. To a lot of these uh, free We've agents out there, the last forty-five days. But yeah, I know, I hear, I hear you. I know. Coming up now, next, now it really gets going, though. Yeah, it's going to be a fun week here with the draft coming up on Friday. Of course, everyone, all the NHL folks will be in town. Uh, McCrimmon holding court with his hot toddies. I think that's what he drinks: hot toddies. Uh, can Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers complete the comeback? Must win and make history tonight. It is do or die. For both teams in Sunrise, Florida. Back with more right after this on Lockdown Golden Knights. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop, but the playoffs are winding down right now with just one game left on the docket. We got fewer games now, of course, going on. It's all baseball mostly, and sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel, Let's me keep up with the sports going on whenever I want them. We've got the WNBA right now. We've got baseball after hockey tonight. All I have to do is open up the app, dream up my bets anytime I am in the mood. And, of course, everyone's prepping for the NFL. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day all summer long. So we head into the dog days of summer. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast. Friday, of course, is WTF with the Friday and all those shenanigans on Saturday, sometimes it's the Chris and Chris Jr. Show, the YouTube exclusive. It comes down to this Game 7 Stanley Cup Final in Florida tonight. Can the Oilers ride the momentum after winning three straight? Or can Edmonton flame out? Did they expend so much energy in coming back the last three games that maybe they don't have enough to go around. We'll have to see tonight. Uh, yesterday, the Panthers' Ser Sergei Bobrovsky uh, was not on the ice, not at practice yesterday. Paul Maurice said that he wanted Bobrovsky to get back into a routine of having time off the day before a game. But I have to ask the question, why now? This is listen. It, it's it's verbal warfare right now. It's coach speak. There's it could be absolutely nothing. It could legitly be just do something different. Whatever his routine was for games five, six, four, five, and six hasn't worked. So maybe this is just shaking it up a little bit, or maybe there's more to it. Let's see what happens. Uh, Pre-game skate should be happening in about the next uh, I don't know two, three hours or so local time. Maybe even sooner than that. Let's see if he's actually on the ice today or if there's any news that pops today. I'm not sold that it's completely above the table. 
you never know. You just never know. And Bobrowski, you can argue he is injured and not playing well right now, and that's why he's not playing well. Who knows? Um, <laughs> updated odds, just looking at some stuff here right now. So, McDavid, when we were talking about this, I said, if you like the Oilers to make the comeback, don't bet the Oilers at plus 700. Take I want McDavid. I should have. Hey, you I want McDavid. Have. You, 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 wanted, you wanted the Oilers plus I 700. The side. Yes. I said the better bet after game number four after game number four was McDavid was at plus three. 700 to win the con Smythe because you got a chance to win that bet with the, the Panthers still winning the series if it went to six games. Well, it was plus 700 before game five. Now before game seven, McDavid's minus 2,500 to win the con Smythe. My goodness. Now, if Barkov goes off tonight and, and McDavid's quiet, he could steal that at 10 to one. If Bobrowski... You know, has a uh, wins this game four to one, or shuts out the or shuts out the Oilers tonight. Bobrowski could also steal us at seventy five to one. There's some value on the board. Bobrowski was a was a hundred to one yesterday. They actually dropped twenty five units, so that's noteworthy. That's some sharp money just taking a shot right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is uh, a lot of people calling this the biggest game in the history of the NHL tonight. So that's it's tremendous, and uh, it's fun for us because we're not fans of either team. Although Chris is said to be a uh, an Oiler I'm, backer, I'm pretty I'm pretty vested right now, Tony. I'm I'm pretty vested. I brought I brought the big guns out today. I brought the big guns out today. I'm pretty vested right now. How much is how much are one of those cards worth? If someone put five thousand in front of me right now, I'd have to take a deep breath and say, I don't know. But if wow. they win, if the Oilers win tonight, today. Value. Today's price is not tomorrow's price. That's my that that's my thing. Today's <laughs> price is not tomorrow's price. The Oilers dominated game number six, Chris. Uh, they were so much faster and quicker. Man, their entries were just perfect. They were, as you say, in the press box sometime immaculate. Uh, Florida looked like it was skating in the Everglades at times. Uh, Stuart Skinner, I thought, made perhaps the biggest save of the series in game six as the puck got under him. Uh, perhaps oh. it was just a fun uh, play there. Primary and assist. He got the assist because he got the primary assists. I know. Well, he was fighting. the The puck was under him. He's trying to find it. He takes the paddle out, gets it over to that Con Smythe uh, candidate, Darnell Nurse, and Nurse with the uh, the empty net goal. Well, Nurse doesn't tip the scale at plus 100,000, so he's uh, he's a write-in vote right now, it looks like. If we wanted um, another 10 more games, you know, in the series. You might, need another, you might need another 30 games. 30. The, the one thing I'm curious, um, I remember watching game number five, and I felt the ice was absolutely terrible. I don't know if, what the weather is going to be tonight down in Sunrise. I assume it's a, I assume humid and rainy. That's kind of what happens in Florida. Um which if that's the case, I think that's a little bit of an equalizer for the Florida Panthers. I think Edmonton has been the faster team this series. At times, Florida, I think, was the faster team. Edmonton has taken that. And, you know, another thing to think about, first three games, Panthers came out, took care of business. I think that was the experience talking, right? The Florida Panthers obviously saw what it's like to lose a Stanley Cup last year, and they came out, and that experience was very helpful in helping them get to a 3-0 lead. Well, now all of a sudden... The Oilers have six games of Stanley Cup experience, so the experience is out the window right now. Um, the battle of Paul Maurice to uh, Coach Knobloch, that's, I mean, you have all, all the games that Maurice has of experience, that's out the window right now. Knobloch has lived it for the last six games, and Knobloch's adjustments have are what got the Oilers to the Stanley Cup, and then obviously, of course, uh, what McDavid is, and, and uh, company has been doing. But game six, McDavid, I won't say a non-factor. He helped other things happen. Um, Leon Dreisaitl just one assist. He's out there laboring big time. Game seven, you're not going to – you're not silencing McDavid tonight. You're not. Well, McDavid had no points and no shots on goal. So I have to ask, was William Carlson guarding him? Sometimes he just disappears, folks. Come on. And then uh, Dry Settle with that dime on a perfect assist Great to uh, Warren Fogel. And that That's was awesome. a highlight. And I think Dry Settle has to be, he has to be up for this game. And again, you're not hurt anymore. All those little injuries and hurts, they go away in a game seven. Alexander Barkov was uh, spectacular with the goal. How much, yes. how much did that goal that was taken off the board, the Barkov goal, um, how much did that take away the steam for our, for the Florida Panthers? Um, 
because of the offside penalty. I said it's offside. You're arguing with fans. You said that it wasn't offside. No, my thing, Tony, was that the league called it offsides, all right? Every angle that ESPN showed, you couldn't find it. You couldn't find it. But if the NHL is calling that back, they had something. So my plea was, NHL, show us the angle. Show us what you got. And then Dave Jackson, who's been a, a very great follow throughout uh, throughout all of this, put it out there. Or was it P? I don't know. Whoever it was. One of the former refs put the put two angles out there that clearly and definitively showed it was offsides. Now it was by two or three inches, but it was offsides. It was so Reinhardt. I'm glad right? that wasn't, we, it, wasn't it Reinhardt who was offside? I don't know who it was, but they yeah, were offside by 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 the tip of a skate blade. I mean, it was it was close. So the puck has to completely cross on the entry, not just a piece of the puck, which is interesting. I almost wonder if that's a rule that maybe needs to be looked at, but. Either way, it was offsides, and I don't blame Paul Maurice for in the live moment for you know flipping out like that. I thought, I mean, I didn't think it was offsides at first. You're watching and you're trying to find it. I'm an, I'm I'm rooting for for the Oilers and McDavid for obvious reasons. So I'm a, uh, you know, I'm happy that it worked out like that. But I didn't see it like that at first. So, but yeah, that was a huge moment. That was definitely a turning point in the game. And um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Um, I hope we don't have anything like that tonight. I hope. I know you're dying goalie for goalie interference. You are dying end, for an overtime, overtime goalie in overtime. interference. I, I can say it, man. Uh, we got Brett Hall and Crease all over again tonight. This is an Oilers team that was 2-9-1 at the start. Amazing comeback. Great coaching by Knobloch. And one of the things Great that I read the past, uh, it, it's been terrific. I mean, Yes, it has. No, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm on okay. the train. I'm on the train. I know you weren't. You're an AHL coach. What's he going to do? I can't. Okay. But in 100%. any event, he took this season in eight game increments. So the, when he first came in, he said the next eight games are this. This is what we have to do. Don't look beyond eight games. We're going to take them in eight game increments. Okay. And it really wound up working. They had the eight game win streak. They had the 16 game win streak this past season. So something definitely worked there the way that he just kind of broke it down for the team and simplified things this past season. New voice. I mean, new voice, new leadership. Jack Campbell to the AHL. Boom, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying VGK could pick up Jack Campbell? Let's go. <laughs> they said Gibson's still out there, too. I saw that. You know, Can they somehow get a 95% salary retainment for that to happen? <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah. Evander Kane, Evander Kane uh, was out on the ice yesterday. Uh, back... Hopkins is ill. I mean, I don't think that's an issue, but. Okay. And so Kane might be back in action tonight. Uh, Darnell Nurse, our MVP, was not on the ice. What's his plus minus now? Because he was, he was on the border of breaking the record at minus 16. And I think he's really closed a huge gap there. I'd say he's what about minus twelve or eleven, maybe. I don't know, but he's done a terrific. Definitely job. playing uh, some Norris level hockey <laughs> by all means, right there. Um, ah, it doesn't show it on this one. I gotta, I gotta go somewhere else yeah. to find it. But he's yeah. really closed the gap there. He's gonna be. He was a plus uh, three in the regular season. So there you go. All right. So let's see tonight if we could have the reverse sweep. I'm a little anxious about this game. I thought for sure Edmonton in each of the past three games, I thought I could see the comeback. You did too. We talked a lot about the odds and who we would take and we thought that they weren't done. And because of their explosiveness offensively, we thought they still had a chance. Well, can well, we see the Tony, your, your take today? about the losing streaks and what happened afterwards twice in the regular season? I know it's regular season, but again, Oilers, uh, they don't when they lose a few games in a row, they get cooking. What was it? Two eight game winning or an eight game winning streak? And eight, like, and streak? Yeah. eight and the sixteen, which is and after, the sixteen. After three game, by Vegas, right after the All Star break, three though, game about. losing streak. That's what they did. They went on a tear. And Mister Knobloch, you only need a one game increment. Don't plan for like those preseason games and such. <laughs> Coming up next, chemistry. you got to build chemistry. Coming up next, our picks, oil slick or cat nip. And that was stupid, and I did it last week on Friday. I'm going to stick with it. Stay with us. Back with more after this on Lockdown Golden Knights. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. 
eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you are into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, you will find that you get everything that is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need, the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the most valuable player and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Back on this edition. Whoa, little Chris in the house. This edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick, and little Chris here in the house for our predictions. They're not our locks of the night. What do we call them? Locks of the cup. Locks of the cup. Oh, the locks of game seven. Holy smokes. They're playing hockey in June. Golics, they're playing hockey in the month of June in the June NHL. June 24th, nevertheless. Okay. I want to see July hockey someday. It's coming. Yeah. It is going to come. I mean, next okay, year there's a college, right? So, I mean, with the with the with the international thing going on, so it could be next year the way it's going. That would be fun. All right, let's get to our locks of the night here. Our picks for Stanley Cup game number seven. Before we dig in, I do have to uh, remind everyone what Christopher said back on November twenty fifth. So, thirty seconds of your time. Here we go. About. Six months, seven months from now, this video will have 50,000 views. So there you go, buddy. All right. Get Oilers. Get you immediate tickets. Oilers versus Bruins. Stanley Cup final. Let her rip, buddy. Who is winning the 2024 Stanley Cup final? My mind changed about the Bruins. I think the Oilers are going to win it. So what's funny is right afterwards, I hit him with the shut up, Tony, I think, uh, thing I got here. I still got it. This has been two, nine, a funny year. I think I hit I hit Chris with a shut up, Tony, after he said that. Two, nine, and one, they were at that point, right? Or they were it was November 25th. No. They were they were oh, four they points behind the, the Sharks and the Celebrini sweepstakes. That's crazy. Well, good pick there. I said before the playoffs, well, at the start of the season, I said a Canadian team, I took the entry, would win the cup. Right, because I you, thought you took seven different teams. Good job. So you took you, you know, took you took an entire country. Good job. Exactly. I went with all of North America, north of North America there. And then I said, if that makes any sense. And then I said I would take Edmonton in the playoffs for the cup final. Uh, but I also had this little other thing going on with you where I asked you before the start of the playoffs, will a team from the east win or a team from the west? And you said the East. I said the West. No, you said the West, and I said the East. I said the East. So I, how can I lose tonight? Let's get to our picks. I think I think we had I think we had somewhere in there. Let's get to the picks, little Chris. You want to jump on board here? (laughs) Okay. So let's see. Only a thirty-minute show, bro. So you know. Let's see. Four of three Edmonton double overtime. Twelve. Twelve minutes. Fifth. 15 seconds remaining. Wow. So 12, okay. 12 15, the Oilers are going to score in double overtime to win the cup. Who's going to score the goal for the Oilers? Yes. Darnell yeah. Nurse. Wow. <laughs> Mic drop. I'm going to go also. I have one overtime and I've got 4 3 Edmonton. And again, it ends on the, uh, the goalie interference call and they count the goal actually. Uh, after a lengthy review, and I'm gonna, I, I think my two players to watch here, my picks to click, uh, Matthias Janmark. That third line is playing really well, uh, and I'm gonna go with Adam Henrique. Henrique back, I think it was in 2012 when he was playing for the New Jersey Devils. He knocked the Panthers out in Game Seven with the game-winning goal. So those are going to be my two picks to click tonight. Can we get Alec Martinez out there for the overtime? GW, uh, GWGSCFOT winner. Uh, a lot of letters in there. Um, 
special night. I'm excited, but I don't see this as a close game. I think uh, a lot of Oiler fans are going to be down there. We're seeing the planes. Cameron Hughes, Cameron Shears taking the trip down there. I'm not sure where where he's going to be tonight, but he's going to be somewhere in the arena. I don't think he's going to be out there throwing T-shirts out necessarily, but he's going to be out there. I think, I don't know if the Oilers flew him down or WestJet. Either way, Cameron's going to be down. We miss you, Cameron. We miss you in Vegas. We'd love to see you in T-Mobile. but. um, Good sure dude. there's your reasons why you're not, unfortunately. So hopefully we'll I see think, you back uh, at some points. I think Adam Henrique, game-winning goal, he beats Anthony Solars. Anthony Walker Solars, died. there you go. All about this guy tonight. All about this guy tonight. All about that, dude. McDavid, he's going to find a way for three points on the scoreboard. Four to one Oilers. They never trail in this game. They never look back. Scoring McDavid, the first goal. McDavid, 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 and give me an Ekblad something in there as well how important is it to score first in a game seven i don't think it's as important honestly i think um i think a game like this you could it can be a roller coaster game and both teams i mean listen the florida panthers they've dealt and they haven't done well with it but they know more about adversity than anybody right now uh, and oilers have been down three nothing right now and they came back to this point so honestly if there's a game where i where the first goal doesn't matter as much, I think it's this one. I think it's not as much about scoring first as much it is about which team finds their game first, which team gets the possession, which team is making clean entries. The team that sustains, your favorite word again, we're going to close the show with it too, the team that sustains their identity and gets to their game for the longest pockets of time wins tonight's game. And I think that's the Oilers. I think they check all the boxes. Still got some questions about health of some of the players on the Panthers. I know they're saying no big deal about Bobrowski. I call BS on that. I think something's up. I think something's up, too. So he's Might not be big, but something's up. Yeah. No, he's definitely worn down, too. So maybe he needed the day rest. Of course, tomorrow, the recap of Game 7. We'll also have the latest on the goalie swap. Swaps, plural. Perhaps oh, there's always something. Yeah. There's there's all, something every all, day. all the GMs are in Vegas right now. There's gonna be plenty of news popping. We haven't had to grade the AHL players yet, so we're ahead of the game in the offseason. Yeah, right. We have we, we haven't talked about Grigory Denisenko's uh, silver night season yet. So there we go. We appreciate everyone tuning in, especially our everydayers. Don't forget Friday's WTF. Oh man, that McDavid card is shiny, bro. It's a rookie. Uh, that's a rookie. That's, that's a rookie, rookie auto. Card smokes that's a good one. A card for like 60 bucks in a break it's like a three or four thousand dollar card right now <laughs> saturday it's the chris and chris jr show the youtube exclusive please subscribe there for my man chris Golick, i'm tony cardasco have a great time enjoy game seven it's going to be a lot of fun tonight hockey season will be over we might be a little blase tomorrow because there's no more pucks coming up here the game might still be going tomorrow when we record it probably still will be we appreciate awesome. you tuning in see you tomorrow right here on locked on golden knights And please take care.